I'm a computer scientist, and for the last six years or so, I've been lucky enough to develop software not just for computers, but for robots. So I have a question for all of you. When you were little, did you ever watch a TV show with a robot in it? Can you raise your hand, like Doraemon or Astro Boy? Okay, great, thank you. I grew up in the United States and in Canada, and there we had a TV show called The Jetsons. And in The Jetsons, it was set in the future, there was an amazing robot maid named Rosie. And Rosie was really cool. You know, she made really delicious pineapple upside down cakes. At least I think they were delicious. When I licked the TV screen, it didn't taste really good, but... <laughs> She played football with the kids. And most of all, the most important thing about Rosie was that you could count on her, just like Doraemon, just like Astro Boy. And so, when I came to Japan about three years ago to continue my work in robotics, somewhere inside of me, I had hoped to find at least the beginning of a robot like Rosie. So first of all, I'd like to show you what my travels uh, have, uh, have um, resulted in. Let's start with a video. Robots that swim, robots that climb, robots that play piano, robots that run marathons, robots that make okonomiyaki, ramen, and cotton candy, robots that recite Shakespeare, really cute bear robots, robots that look like humans. Robots that look like robots but aren't actually robots. And, of course, many, many robots that dance. <laughs> and so for me, seeing all these robots, it was curious. Why is it that so many of these robots exist, but they're not in our homes yet? Let me tell you a story. It's about a friend of mine named Paula. She's a programmer like myself, so we speak to each other in binary, 011001. And um, the last time we spoke, she told me about this really cool technology called robotic wheelchairs. These are powered wheelchairs that automatically avoid obstacles. Uh, they create maps using sensors of their environments, and they give back freedom to those people who need it. But Paula told me that she was frustrated. She said, you know, Angelica, this kind of technology could change people's lives. It could be so useful. But there's just one problem. They're just too afraid to use it. Trust. If we can't trust robots, we're not going to let them into our homes. We're not going to let them play with our kids. And worst of all, we're not going to be able to let them help us make dinner. And I know I need, really need help with cooking. So. Uh, let me tell you, today I'm going to talk about a couple of different design decisions that we can make in order to make robots more accessible, and in particular, less scary. Okay? Uh, if you look on the screen, this was an experiment we did last year. It's with a robot called Now. It's a French robot. And we tried to make Now move with emotions. So on the left, you'll see Now maybe moving a little bit sad. He didn't have a good day. On the right side, this is now hopefully looking a bit more genki, a little bit more energetic. Okay. And then something surprising happened. We asked people to rate how angry now looked. So why don't you try it with me? Take a look at the video on your left side and tell me on a scale of one to four how angry it does now seem. Don't ask why I speak in German. Um, on a scale of one to four, on average, my participants said now looked about two and a half out of five, or two and a half out of four on the angry scale. Okay. Well, then we tried, okay, maybe a control test. How does it compare to a now doing nothing? Like this. And the strange thing is, People rated this more angry, three and a half out of four on the angriness scale, whatever that is. So that's kind of weird, right? Okay, we did another experiment. This is the HRP2 robot. This was also at Kyoto University. And we asked people to rate the robot speaking in different ways. Now, 
one of the participants forgot to turn on the sound. And so he looked at this robot, and he heard nothing, and then I asked him this question. What emotion do you think the robot is trying to convey? Happy, sad, angry, or scared? And for every single one of the questions, he said angry, 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 angry. He didn't hear anything, right? So what is that? What is it about these two robots that made them look a little bit more threatening, a little bit more angry? Uh, another question for you. Who here has been to the monkey park in Arashiyama here in Kyoto? OK, quite a few of you. Thank you very much. Did you notice that there are signs everywhere that say, please do not stare at the monkeys? Across cultures and even among primates, staring is a sign of threat. Right? Or maybe, have you ever had your boyfriend or girlfriend get angry at you? I know I have. Um, they give you this thing called the silent treatment. It's where, you know, they either look at you or they stare off into space and they don't say anything. I'm really bad at looking angry, but yeah, we all <laughs> maybe have seen this before, right? Um, and so what I think is that the world's robots, the Terminator included, are accidentally, inadvertently looking angry and threatening all the time. Okay. So, how can we fix this design idea for today? Oh, he likes nice people. <laughs> to look less scary, robots need to move their heads. That's it. Okay. So uh, I'd like to finish off with another, uh, going back to our original question, which was, how close are we to having Rosie in our homes? Uh, at the beginning, we saw that there were some functional robots, right? The ones that made okonomiyaki. We also saw some sociable robots, like those really cute bear robots. But there are very few of them that are in between, that are both. But this is where Rosie lies. This is where Doraemon and Astro Bo lie. So if we want to have robots help us in our society, we'll need them to be both functional and both sociable. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with a final example. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about my own personal robot that set me back uh, quite a bit of money. It made me, turn me from a really a poor you know, university student to a very, very poor university student. Uh, this is Naoki, he's a koosho no kikai, if you understand the kanji. Here he is helping me make macaron, being a little bit useful for me. And in the top right, it's him playing an instrument called a theremin so we can play musical duets together. And here he is on stage as well, so I'd like you to meet Naoki and maybe he'll join us. Wake up. I think we all have to be, can you say Naoki? One, two, three. Naoki! Wake up. Everybody's watching. <laughs> Come on. Just a slight, uh, he's, he's really shy, that's all. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> we can do it. He's been working really hard. We had a lot of hard days training the last few days. <laughs> and I hope that we'll be able to meet him. No, no, okay. yeah, we need to check. Okay, he decided to wake up. Thank you very much, yep. <laughs> okay, so one of the cool things about robots is that they can speak whatever language that we program them to. So first of all, uh, I'd like now to be my translator. So now, translation mode. Please tell them I'm sorry I could not speak in Japanese today. <laughs> and it's because my Japanese is really poor. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Um, and finally, maybe we can do a little, have him do a little dance. Yeah. Okay, who wants to see him dance? Okay. Hi, dance, kudasai. Ooh. I'm gonna put Thank you very much.